Hi, welcome to Senior Moments Successful Aging. My name is Mary Beals Lutka. I'm the Area Agency on Aging Director with NACOG, and you can reach us toll free at 877 521 3500. Senior Moments Successful Aging is co sponsored with the Division of Lifelong Learning in Yavapai College and the Area Agency on Aging. Our producer today is Curtis Kegley. If you need to reach Curtis and ask him any questions about today's show, you can call him toll free at 877-521-3500 and say, I need Curtis. Ask him questions about today's show or give him ideas about stuff you'd like to hear about in the future. We'd love to hear from you. So again, welcome to Senior Moment. And we have a very special out of town guest today, Gary Glazner. Hi. Hi, Gary. Well, I wanted to say when you were doing that, operators are standing by. Yeah, I know. It sounds yeah. like it. It's yeah. like I can put in my little computer voice, and operators are standing by now. Yeah. You can call that toll free number. So. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. It's great welcome. Great to be back in Prescott. Yes. Yeah. And um, you, so this kind of came about um, when I heard um, someone talk about the Arizona Commission on um, the Arts mm -hmm. receiving a grant. Right. And, you know, it's, it's uh, uh, from the Virginia Piper Charitable Trust, and it's really to pilot Arizona creative aging. And that's where you come in. And who are you? <laughs> well, I am uh, Gary Glazer, the founder and executive director of the Alzheimer's Poetry Project. Nice. And I started doing this work in 1997 in Northern California. Progressive. Yeah. I should back up just a little bit. Yeah. I was a florist. I was a florist for 18 years, but I wanted to do something more masculine. So I became a poet. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. love it. I love it. So uh, there was a grant, uh, and I applied for it, and I got it. And it was to work at an adult daycare center in uh, Northern California. And no instruction, just to somehow to use poetry. And I didn't know very much about creative aging or Alzheimer's, but I knew enough that I knew I probably couldn't do a traditional poetry workshop. Right. And so I hit on the idea of using classic poems, well-loved poems, that the people might have learned as kids. And my moment of inspiration, the story that I love to share with people, there was a man in the group. His head was down. He wasn't participating. He was seemingly unaware of his surroundings. And I said the Longfellow poem. I shot an arrow into the air, and his eyes popped open. He said, it fell to earth. I know not where. And suddenly he was with us oh and able to participate. And it was an incredible moment for me as a poet and as a person to see how useful the poems could be. That just gave me goosebumps. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. You know, and that is so typical, you know, for that disengagement. Right. Uh, and, to, and to see someone come alive. Yeah, it almost felt like that, you yeah. know, of, of coming alive is a good way to describe it. And uh, so at that same time, uh, my mother... Uh, Frankie was in the last stages of cancer mm. and there was a morning that my father called his name was Billy and he was one of these guys you know caregiver guys men that he never asked for help you know and he called and he said your mom's really agitated she's asking for cherry ice cream and my mom and dad were childhood sweethearts uh -oh. They became boyfriend and girlfriend at age five and six. Oh, my gosh. We're from Oklahoma. I love it. <laughs> and so I got the ice cream, and I came over, and I remember this moment so strongly. I was reaching back, and I had all the books from the workshop. And I just thought, I'm going to bring the books in and use them with my mom. Yeah. And so I got the ice cream, and I went in, and she ate the ice cream and started to be less agitated and calm down. And she had teased my dad with the little rhyme, Can you bake a cherry pie, Billy boy? And that was one of the rhymes that was yes. in the books. So I began to say it, and my mom began to sing it, and to do these little kind of hand motions, you know, Can you bake a cherry pie, Billy, Billy boy, Billy, Billy boy? boy. Yes. And again, it was this moment of clarity mm. and of hopefulness and joy and you know it was very playful and again it reinforced to me how powerful these old poems could be or in this case a song uh, yeah. and since that time I've dedicated my life to working with people with memory loss and we've done programming now the Alzheimer's Poetry Project we've done programming now in 26 states and internationally in Germany, Poland, 
South Korea and Australia and this uh, later this year I'll do work in Canada and in England. How exciting. Yeah, and I love to travel. So, well, yeah, yeah, then you've got it made. You've yeah. got it made. Because, yeah. you know, I, you know, and I was just reading some statistics about the world aging issue. Right. You know, it's not just the United States. The whole world is going through this. Yeah. Um, and, you know, how do we um, deal with it and help um, more creative lives, more quality of life? Um, right. You know, I know my mother has Alzheimer's and music's very important to her. Mm -hmm. So, you know, why are the, the arts important in later life yeah what kind of music does your mom like classical like like rock on and off i think is her favorite oh wow so like piano yeah, and piano concertos and symphony symphony you know yeah she loves yeah. that kind of stuff that's her favorite and do, do you and i know you said before you have five sisters yes yeah so it's a big family <laughs> big you're all pulling together as a team yes. to do this work that's yeah. so important right? we're very blessed yeah you know and do you play music for your mom is yes. that part of like how you yes yeah so t talk about that a little you know bit. when you play music it it, it it also helps that agitation it helps that mm -hmm. it helps the idea uh you know like when she's needs to be refocused yes yes Right. When she needs to be refocused, sometimes that music will take her back. Yeah, like my mom with the cherry ice cream. Right. The agitation dissipates, you to, you and then refocus. and then it brings great, out that joy. Sure. Yeah. Refocus that that is a we great reconnect way. with. She can reconnect with the joy of that piece of music. Yeah. Right. You know, whatever that piece might be, one of her favorites, or even and also singing. Um, yeah. There's certain old she songs liked to sing. she likes. She loved to sing. Yeah. Um, and she had a great alto voice. Um, she won't sing anymore, but she likes mm. to, to listen. Yeah. You know. Well, so at the core of this work is this is what we're talking about. Yeah. In a sense, you could think of it as a communication tool. Yeah. Because as you're saying, you know, maybe your mom's agitated or, you know, whatever it is. Throughout the day, you and your sisters, the people at home that are listening who are thinking like my husband is has memory loss or my mom does right um we have to take care of them that's yes. a big part of it right yes keep them healthy fed clean all of these things that we think of as caregiving mm -hmm. but this is a moment where you can step outside of that and maybe it's just for a few minutes mm -hmm. maybe it's just at the end of the day you listen to Rachmaninoff yeah and that moment along with all the stuff we have to do, right? The, the critical work that is caregiving, we can step outside and in my case, we can share a poem or with your mom, music or, or even maybe, she, as you said, she doesn't like to sing anymore, but she likes to listen still. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to ask, would you like to hear a little bit about how we Yes. Share poetry and perform poetry I, with people. I, absolutely. Okay. You know, how does that work? What? How do you? How do you do that and structure that? Right. So our main technique, and I really believe. Now I'm a poet, right? I mean, my last book is called How to Make a Living as a Poet. Now the joke is they keep it in the fiction section of the library. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. Yeah. But but it's true. I do make my living as a poet, and but I think anybody can do this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to share with you. Our main technique, which we call call and response, okay. right? Mm -hmm. And so it's just, I'm going to say a line of poetry, and you're going to repeat after me, and we'll show how you could do this at home uh, with your loved one. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, a lot of this comes from working with kids, so it also works with kids as well. And you can get, you know, like the grandkids, the grandkids involved. Be involved as well. Yeah. So I'm going to say a line of poetry, and you're going to repeat after me. Okay. And we're going to start with, it's what's called a dicho. So it's actually a Spanish proverb or wisdom saying, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to say it first in Spanish and then in English. Okay. Okay? So I'm going to say it and then you say it. Yes, sir. All right, here we go. Pan es pan. Pan es pan. Queso es queso. Queso es queso. No hay amor. No hay amor. Si no hay un beso. Si o no hay un beso. Beso, beso, beso. Beso, beso, beso. Abrazo. <laughs> All right, in English. Okay. Bread is bread. Bread is bread. Cheese is cheese. Cheese is cheese. Without a kiss. Without a kiss. There is no love. There is no love. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Abrazo! <laughs> so you can see, you know, we're using humor. That's great. We're using touch. 
Yeah. And this can be really powerful as a communication tool. And it can be the lyrics from a song, or it can be, in this case, a poem, or this is actually a proverb. Right. And so that's our main technique of how we perform poems with people. So you're not putting them on a spot. No. You're not making them frustrated because they won't remember. Right. I, I love that. Right. You're playing to a strength. Uh-huh. Now, here's the, here's the little scientific, the little background part. Uh-huh. It's actually tapping into a type of memory that's not autobiographical, right? Like right, we normally right. think of memory as, remember the time we went to the Dells? Yeah. Right? Right. This is a type of memory called echoic or echo memory and it's a sense memory auditory in this case it's four to eight seconds long so listen to it with a line of of shakespeare so long as men could breathe or eyes could see so long lives this and this gives Gives life life to to thee thee. it almost snaps directly into place Mm -hmm. with shakespearean or iambic right? right and so you're not asking the person, remember this time we did something. Right. But you're just saying, repeat the words back to me. And we find that even in fairly late stage uh, dementia, as, as the person is becoming less verbal, they still can do this. Imagine how it feels when so much is being taken away. Yeah. yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And suddenly this goofy guy... <laughs> comes in and is saying a poem with you and playing and joking around, maybe even taking your hand and doing the rhythm of the poem. Let's try that. Let's do that one. If you're at home, you can actually take somebody's hand right now and do this with us. We're going to do the Robert Burns poem. Okay. Ready? Here we go. It's called Red Rose. My love is like a red, red rose. My love is like a red, red rose. That's newly sprung in June. That's newly sprung in June. My love is like a melody. My love is like a melody. That's sweetly played in tune. That's sweetly played in tune. Now, Robert Burns is Scottish. Now, Robert Burns is Scottish. Yeah, this part I'm just talking (laughs) about. See how well I am following your (laughs) instructions. So, what's a a Scottish accent? You know, what's called a Scottish burr. The burr. Yeah, Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, let's do it with a Scottish burr. Oh, yeah, this would be good. Oh, yeah, you're challenging me now. Here we go. Okay. My love is like a red, red rose. My love is like a red, red rose. That's newly sprung in June. That's newly sprung in June. My love is like a melody. My love is like a melody. That's sweetly played in tune. That's sweetly played in tune. Beautiful, beautiful. (laughs) You know, that would be a great technique for, for Mother to sing. Yeah, and you could sing it. I could sing a line and she could sing a line. You know what? Let's try that. Do you want to try it? Sure, why not? Okay, so I'm going to say it. Okay. And you're going to sing it. Oh, no. So you got to figure out a melody and how to <laughs> okay. sing it. And we'll just go back and forth a little bit. Okay. Okay. So I'll say it, you sing it. And you can sing along with her or do the poem. Either way. I think way, you should sing along with me out there. Sing along with her. Okay. Or you can hum if you'd like to hum. Or just look at us. All right. Here we go. <laughs> My love is like a red, red rose. My love is like a red, red rose. That's newly sprung in June. That's newly sprung in June. My love is like a melody. My love is like a melody. That's sweetly played in tune. That's sweetly played in tune. My love is like a red, red rose. My love is like a red, red rose. It's newly sprung in June. It's newly sprung in June. My love is like a melody. My love is like a melody. That's sweetly played in tune. That's sweetly played in tune. Mm. Mm. <laughs> that was fun, that huh? That was fun. I think that's how I'm going to get my mother to sing. So you guys got to try that. Yeah. I love it. So that's our main technique. Because she gets all upset when she can't remember the words. Exactly, and this is perfect because either she's hearing you say them, right? Yeah. Or sing them, or maybe you're even just humming it. And and she can make, la, her own, la, la, right? make her own melody up. Yeah. Too, so she's not like bound yes. to whatever. It's yeah. The tune in her head yeah. is the important one, and I love that. Yeah, it? and it's in the moment. Yeah. Which is what we learn from people living with memory loss. Yeah. Right? That old Zen live in the moment. Yeah. And they really do it. And that can be very beautiful and very powerful. So that's kind of all those things that you're speaking of or what's behind that yeah. powerful impact yeah, with so, dementia, how they respond. Yeah, how we see 
you know, this vibrant response. It's a yeah. little bit of like what's going on um, scientifically, uh -huh. right? Right. So we know there was a study done in Germany that showed that reciting poetry using call and response lowers the heart rate and lowers the pulse, which is an indication that stress is being lowered. Yes. So that's part of what's going on. You're taking in oxygen. It's just an aerobic benefit, right? Right. Yeah. And the playfulness, the idea that they're responding to the words rather than trying to recall them, all really powerful. Very powerful, you know, and it's so it's so sad how much medication sometimes folks have to be on, and this would be so much nicer than medication for agitation. Sure, yeah, and we are seeing that. Yeah, um, you know, there's a whole field of creative aging which mm -hmm. we're talking about today. So there's dance and movement. Mm -hmm. There's storytelling. There's music, right? Uh, visual arts. All of these things work together to help the person live a more full life. You know, and be ha and like you said, it's it is all about the moment. Yeah. You know, and I think that's one of the things I've always taken away from mom is like we all need to live in the moment a little bit more. Yeah, and I think for me, <laughs> that's what I really get out of it. Yeah. And and if you yeah. can do that, it's very powerful for you as well. So how do you you know um, bring students and and elders together and dementia patients together? You know, in your project. Right. So bringing in kids now. I work with a range of ages, okay. so I'm actually, uh, I'm based in Brooklyn, New York, okay. and my main place I work at is an adult daycare center called New York Memory Center. Now this is fantastic because on the ground floor is New York Memory Center, on the second floor is the preschool. Oh, nice. Yeah, and so it's the youngest kids I've worked with, and they are the young, the little ones are two and a half and three years old. Aww. Yeah. So. We don't even call it poetry. We just say, do you want to play a game? And we do. We teach yeah. them a poem, and then we go downstairs, and we work with the elders. Now, we don't have to do any arts, just getting them in the same room. Ola is one of the women. She loves the kids. She now has gotten, she tries to see how many she can get on her lap. I love it. She's now gotten eight <laughs> on her lap at once. But, but then we do the poems, and they play, and... Um, you know, you can work with older kids, like high school kids. Mm -hmm. I have a pilot project called Poetry for Life, and that brings students who are participating in what's called the Poetry Out Loud National Recitation Contest. It's like a spelling bee. Mm -hmm. Starts in the school, goes to the city or region, and then each state sends a winner to Washington, D.C., nice. and there's a national champion. So a couple years ago, we started to bring those students in to work with the elders, and we experimented with this yesterday in Phoenix, which was fantastic. And it was actually the Arizona State Champion, a young man named Hunter, and he was reciting these beautiful poems with the elders, and it was just really fun. I imagine it was very powerful as well. Yeah, it's for powerful him. for the kids. Yeah. First of all, they get a chance to see, like, they learned, but they, it's not in, it doesn't end in a test. Right. It ends in... Seeing somebody smile or laugh. And awareness. Yeah, so that service learning mm -hmm. can be powerful. And so, um, you know, work with kids of all ages and uh, really, really fun to do that as well. You have a, a, a you, you mentioned one book, but, you know, the one in the fiction section. Yes. But you have another one, Dementia Art Celebrating Creativity in Elder Care. Can you tell me a little bit about that book? Yeah, so that was fun to put together. Um, it has art lessons in all of the different, you know, dance, uh, visual art, poetry, okay. music. But all the art lessons are as recipes. And so I wanted them to be nourishing, right? Mm -hmm. And then how we think about recipes. Like, we take the recipe and make it our own. Right. So I wanted people to feel comfortable. And also, sometimes people say, I'm not really creative, right? Some people feel that way. Yeah. But we all can cook. Right, And so you can see the connection between the creativity of cooking and the art lessons. And it was really fun to put together the, you know, the, the little recipes and have, have fun names like cha Change the World Poetry Pie. You know, this kind of How stuff. can we find your book? Uh, you can find it on our website. Okay, and on, that is? Um, 
alzpoetry.com. Okay. A L Z poetry.com. Okay. But you can just, if you search for Alzheimer's Poetry Project, it'll come right it'll up. It'll come right up. And it's right there. We'll find Gary Glazner. Yeah, you find me okay. living on the internet. <laughs> Is that your sim or you? Yeah, yeah. right, right. <laughs> what do they call it? An avatar. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is that what it? Yeah, an avatar. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, you've already answered one question I was going to ask you about poetry being a solitary form, and 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 the way you're presenting it, it isn't. No, it it goes back to when poetry was an oral art form. Yeah. And you know, certainly we do writing as well, but but the oral tradition of the sort of troubadour, you know, that goes yeah. from town to town and tells the news in, in poetry. That's, we really are playing off that strength. Then spoken word, you know, that kind of idea. You know, the oral history, that's yeah. the only way history yeah, was passed history. down. That's right, From yeah. generation Before to generation. Before we had written language, mm-hmm. uh, we had Homer keeping the history of the Greeks, right, yeah. in in epic poems like the Odyssey. Right. Yeah, so um, that study I mentioned before in Germany, they actually used the rhythm that Homer would have used, the Greek rhythm. So they really delved into the oral part of it. And kept that, you know, like you said, the how it rolls together. Yeah. You know, so how, how what was your experience going to other countries? Um, you know, and, and teaching this project, you know, how did it work with other languages and cultures? And Yeah. I, yeah. So, you know, we're using classic western poems right, right? shakespeare right. you know william blake uh the you know tiger tiger burning bright that kind of stuff but in other cultures what we do is identify the material in that language that they would have learned so for instance in germany one of the rhymes that kids learn when they're little kids it's almost like a lullaby mm-hmm. and it's sung to the tune of i'm a little teapot and i've uh had wonderful experiences with this and it, it goes like this it goes ala mina inchin swimming off them z so basically it says all my little ducks are swimming on the lake the head goes down to fishing the butt goes in the air and that's <laughs> it that's the whole thing that's the whole thing yeah now um it's not a great poem but everybody knows it but everybody knows it and it snaps in i was actually in germany it was a beautiful fall day and there was a, you could rent a boat, and I rented a rowboat. Oh, nice. And I was on this river, the Marburg River, and I was rowing, and it was the fall leaves, and the sun, you know, coming through. And I saw these two German construction workers, and they were on a bridge, and they were welding, mm-hmm. and they were working, you know, and I rowed up to them, and I was like, excuse me, and they're like, ah, you know what, you know, <laughs> Girl. And all I had to do was just go, a la mina. And they both were like little boys. They turned to little boys, a la mina, inching, swimming. And they, you know, it was great. We immediately had this connection. How fun. Yeah. One thing um, that I was really excited about last year was we got to work with uh, the Navajo Nation and to do some work with their senior centers. And this is an interesting thing because clearly growing up as Navajos, they're not going to necessarily know the sort of Western poetry that we know, Correct, right? right? And their traditional songs and chants and stories may be sacred, and they may only use them at certain times of the year. So we were trying to find out, like, what, what could we use in the senior center setting, and we found lullabies. Nice. And one woman would sing a lullaby, and then everybody had a story. Either they sang it, as a grandmother or a grandfather, or maybe they remembered somebody singing it to them. And so we really bonded around that. And she told the story of, even though her sons now are over six feet tall and, you know, <laughs> grown men, yeah. when they come in, she's still like, and she, they come over and they sit on her lap and she still sings the lullabies to them. So it was really sweet. So finding this cultural key is really uh, mm-hmm. is really strong, and we find that in all of the different countries that I've worked in, um, South Korea, really interesting poetry there that we found. Um, Australia's they have their own poetry, but they certainly know uh, some of the Western ones as well. So how fun! So you have to do research before you go to each country and kind of yeah pair your um, project around that. Yeah, and I find a yeah. poet like uh, in Poland. Uh, I worked with a great translator uh Bogdan Piasecki and he the moment that I knew it was going to work was we were in Warsaw and we're doing a poem and this woman now I don't speak Polish so she starts to sing 
this, it's clearly a chicken poem. Okay. And she's singing and everybody's laughing. I'm going, it's going to work. Yeah, it was yeah. Really fun. so that was going to be one of my questions too. Yeah, I'm sure you needed some translators, or do you speak all these languages? Yeah, no, so. I work with a local translator, Great. and with the Navajos, it was often the senior center supervisor that would right. translate. And depending on the group, sometimes it was, you know, in English, and some Navajos, sometimes all Navajos, so everything was getting translated on the fly. Well, it's it's really nice to have you here, um, you know, in Arizona doing some work um, around creative aging and how important it is to, well, it's always important to be creative. People don't think of themselves being creative, but I think yeah. all of us are in our own way. Sometimes we're creative in how we decorate our house or yeah. whatever, yeah. but I love how the fact dress. that you're, you're addressing that late life, especially with dementia. You know, so many times they, they, they get written off and their head is down and they're not engaged. And this, this is engaging them. Yeah. In yeah, it's moment. all about participatory art. Yes. How do we create together? And that's, a, yeah, participatory art. I yeah. like that. You Would know. you like to try another experiment? If, if it's short, we've it's only short? got a couple minutes. Okay, perfect. Okay. So this is an E.E. E. Cummings poem. Okay. And you're going to sing, I've got the whole world in my hands. Okay. So I'm going to recite a little bit of poetry, give you space. You're going to come and sing that. Okay. And then we'll just perform a little bit together. Okay. All right, here we go. And we'll do call and response at the first. Okay. So I'll sit, you sit. Here we go. I carry your heart. I carry your heart. I carry it in my heart. I carry it in my heart. I'm never without it. I'm never without it. Anywhere. I got the whole world in my hands. He got the whole world in, in his, his hands. hands. He's got, got the whole world in his hands. hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Let's do a... a, a He's got the Let's do a... a an Arizona one. Okay, what? He's got the Grand and the Canyon. In his hands. He's got the Grand and the Canyon. In his hands. He's got the Grand and the Canyon. <laughs> in his hands. He's got, got the, the whole world, world in, in his hands. hands. Thank you, Gary. Beautiful. Oh, this was Gary fast. Gary Glazner. It goes by way too fast. I'm sure you really enjoyed um, playing with us today on Senior Moment. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Again, this is Senior Moment. Successful aging. Until next time.